masked men break into an influencer's home in the Hollywood Hills. He describes the scary encounter. Taking a stand against artificial intelligence. How one company is trying to combat the growing phenomenon. Hello, everyone. You're watching The Rundown. I'm Robin Winston. More on those stories coming up in a moment. But first, the free ride is over for Waymo passengers. The Rebel Taxi Company is now charging for its driverless service. Waymo says that more than 50,000 people are on its wait list to use the service. Last month, the company said it was starting with a fleet of fewer than 50 cars covering a 63 square mile area from Santa Monica to downtown L.A. The service is similar to other ride hailing smartphone apps such as Lyft and Uber, except that Waymo's vehicles have no human drivers present. Riders follow instructions on the app and through the vehicle sound system. Waymo workers can assist remotely. Tesla is also looking to get in the driverless taxi game. CEO Elon Musk said Friday that Tesla would reveal a robo-taxi product in August. Well, get on out there and enjoy the beautiful sunshine while you can because there is rain on the way. Here's meteorologist Stephanie Omo with your first alert forecast. Hello everyone, as we continue, as we head into Thursday and Friday, we can expect some sunshine around, but by Friday, a transitional day, temperatures get even cooler, but still very nice. However, we head into Saturday and Sunday, we're tracking some changes this weekend. As you see, we check out the long range future cast. We do have an area of low pressure sliding in. And ahead of it, we have a cold front. This is gonna bring some wet weather on Saturday across the region. Eventually by Sunday, the center of this storm will begin to slide in. We'll be tracking that rain and also high elevation snow. This is a cold system, so we can expect much cooler temperatures by Monday. Things should be more on the quiet side, but early rain estimates, at least right now, a quarter to an inch of rain will be possible with this. A little bit more possibly along the foothills and area mountains. Back to you. We're learning more about what led to the death of a baby girl on the 405 freeway in Culver City. Detectives tell the NBC4 I team they believe the eight-month-old baby was in her nine-year-old sister's arms when their mother, Danielle Johnson, pushed them out of a passenger door and into traffic on the 405. The girl lost her grip. The baby fell onto the road and was hit by cars. The nine-year-old sister made it to the shoulder and survived. Detectives also believe Johnson stabbed 29-year-old Jalen Cheney to death inside a Woodland Hills apartment. CHP and Redondo Beach Police say Johnson then crashed her car and was killed instantly. Police say there's no doubt Johnson was the only person responsible in this case. Former Dodgers pitcher Julio Rios has been charged in an alleged domestic violence incident. He now faces five misdemeanor criminal charges, including battery and assault. Rios is accused of having a physical altercation with his wife following a soccer match last year. That's when the 27-year-old was placed on administrative leave by Major League Baseball. Earlier this year, prosecutors decided against going after any felony charges. He's set to appear in court in May. The LAPD believes one man is responsible for two recent violent attacks along the Venice Canals. And they're warning neighbors to stay alert. Both attacks happened Saturday night. Police say a woman was hit from behind and knocked unconscious near Sherman Canal. About an hour later, police say the same man targeted another woman in the same area. Police are increasing patrols in the area with more officers in cars and on foot. A frightening night for an MTV reality star, masked men broke into Joey Zalzik's Hollywood Hills home. He says they used the device to shatter his sliding glass window on Monday around midnight. It triggered the alarm. A large number of police officers responded within minutes of the break-in. Here's what he told his followers on Instagram. We didn't know if they were still in the house. We were like so freaked out. I was like screaming help from the balcony. Zalzik says the mask intruders took away his sense of safety and he feels violated and sick to the stomach. So far, no arrests have been made. Now to the major court decision in Arizona banning nearly all abortions in the state. The Arizona Supreme Court ruled that a 160-year-old ban that's still on the books is enforceable. The ban does not go into effect right away. Legal analysts say it'll be at least two months before that happens. Opponents of abortion rights celebrated the court's decision, but Arizona's Democratic governor expressed outrage, calling the announcement a dark day for the state. I am calling on the legislature to do the right thing right now and repeal this 1864 ban and protect access to reproductive health care. 
Supporters of abortion rights in Arizona are trying to get a constitutional amendment on the November ballot that would allow abortions up until about the 24th week of pregnancy. Just days after city crews cleaned up piles of trash around a Fairfax home, it appears the trash is building back up again. This is new video of that home on Martell Avenue, and you can see the items and trash just piling up against the home. The homeowner's sister says he has autism, and last week, Mayor Bass said he needs help. The city says 23 complaints about the trash had been filed against the homeowner in the past. L.A. Mayor Karen Bass announced a partnership between two nonprofit groups to help veterans facing homelessness. The Mayor's Fund of L.A. and U.S. Vets will work together to provide resources to veterans and their families. Some of those services include access to rental and eviction support, federal funding, case management, and career counseling. The mayor says a lot of veterans are faced with difficult choices. I've heard of vets who have had to make a choice between accepting benefits or accepting housing because the benefits would make them ineligible to receive housing assistance. Mayor Bass will be at the Conference of Mayors in Washington, D.C. later this month. She's the chair of the Homelessness Task Force for the group. And Mayor Bass says she plans to push for more housing vouchers and more permanent housing options for veterans. We're getting a sneak peek at the Acura Grand Prix of Long Beach happening this month. Part of downtown Long Beach will transform into a racetrack. The annual event draws nearly 200,000 fans for the three-day, two-night festival. You'll find Indy 500 race cars, top sports cars, formula drift, and super trucks. It all begins April 19th. Artificial intelligence is growing by leaps and bounds, and some estimate 90% of the content we see on the Internet could be generated by AI as soon as next year. NBC's Kaylee Harton has a closer look at, at how one company is taking a stand against it. As part of their Keep Beauty Real campaign, personal care brand Dove has released this two-minute video. It features images of AI-generated women that pop up online when you search terms like perfect skin and the most beautiful woman in the world. They then compare those to images generated under Dove's beauty standards, as well as the faces of real women. It's part of the company's pledge to never use AI to create or distort images of women, a pledge they hope other companies will also consider signing on to. A global beauty study by Dove found that 9 out of 10 women and girls say they've been exposed to harmful beauty content online. And 1 in 3 say they feel pressure to alter their appearance because of what they see online, even when they know it's fake. AI-generated images in the beauty space is a growing concern, especially for parents. I'm disgusted, horrified. Naveen Radwan says she believes altered images of women on social media contributed to her teenage daughter's anorexia. What are they going to do to themselves when they try to attain a level of perfection that doesn't even exist? Earlier this year, more than 12,000 parents signed an online petition urging TikTok to more clearly label AI-generated influencers over concerns that showing things like flawless skin and perfect bodies creates extreme and utterly unattainable beauty standards for children. It might say, hey, this isn't a real picture. This person actually didn't look like this. But subconsciously, your brain saying, yep, that's what I'm supposed to look like. They're very bad for our well-being and our mental health. Clothing brand Levi Strauss reversed course after facing major backlash over an announcement it planned to experiment with AI-generated body-inclusive avatars like this image on their app and website. Nike promoted its use of advanced AI to create this video, featuring Serena Williams playing a tennis match against her 16-year-old self. The game was the result of more than 130,000 games generated using vid-to-player technique. Coca-Cola owned sports drink Body Armor poked fun at AI content in a recent Super Bowl ad. Artificial flavor optimized for victory times. Artificial? No. Major fashion brands like Revolve are using AI-generated models on some billboards. Ad agencies say this trend is growing, mostly because it saves brands big bucks. But some wonder at what cost. Meantime, SAG-AFTRA is pushing for new laws to regulate the use of AI. The technology was a huge, has, was a huge issue in new contract negotiations. And now the union wants the state to require detailed consent for the use of digital replicas and to require consent from a dead performer's heir before using their likeness on screen. 
The Kobe Bryant statue outside Crypto.com Arena is now as perfect as his 81-point game. The plaque on the statue has three misspellings, but we checked again, and now they're fixed. Former Raptors guard Jose Calderon was misspelled with an S in there, and you can see that on the left, and now it's fixed. Former Laker Vaughn Wafer was listed as VOM, like with an M. That's also fixed, and the word decision had an extra C. That's been corrected as well. The first of three statues for the Laker legend honors his 81-point game back in January of 2006. Winners for one sport in the Paris Olympic Games will be going home with some serious cash. Track and field will become the first sport to allow gold medalists to be awarded with $50,000 in prize money. Silver and bronze medalists are set to also receive money for the LA Games in 2028. The International Olympic Committee does not give out prize money, but many medalists do get paid from their country's governments or other sponsors. If you found yourself humming Total Eclipse of the Heart Monday or searching for it on Spotify, you're not alone. Spotify said Total Eclipse of the Heart had a 635% increase Monday compared to its average streams. Other popular streams included Moondance by Ben Morrison, Here Comes the Sun by The Beatles, and Eclipse by Pink Floyd. All fantastic songs and great hits. You can always get news and weather updates on the NBCLA app and our website, NBCLA.com. And be sure to tune into Today in LA on NBC4 weekdays from 4 to 7 a.m. I'll be helping you get around with traffic reports throughout the morning. Thanks for watching The Rundown.